Hello everyone, my name is Enzo and today my presentation is about sunfish. Why and how did I choose this topic? I was nearby Lake Murray during part of the summer and I went underwater and found multiple families of fish, all of which I photographed. It is very fun to go underwater and discover things you didn't know were there the whole time. So on all my slides I'm going to have a picture of one of the fish that I saw. Um, this particular photo is of a bluegill sunfish. Um, the distinguishing characteristics are blue lines down its body and a spot on its top fin. Here I have it enlarged and I circled the kind of features that make it unique. So, what animals <coughs> live near the Lake Mary shoreline? Well, I believe there'd be some fish, but mainly minnows and not too many large fish. I thought this because I wouldn't have thought there'd be large fish very close to shore. I believe they'd be in deeper waters. Here I have a picture that I took of something that I was expecting to see. This is a blurry photo of an iron-colored shiner minnow. So, what did I find? There was a huge colony of minnows and baby sunfish, as well as one to four adult red breast sunfish. The larger fish seemed to nip at some of the smaller fish, and occasionally at each other, perhaps trying to protect their younger <coughs> eggs. The fish seemed to find my toes extremely tasty. The aggressive behavior seems to go with my research, which says that sunfish are known for being aggressive. Here I have a picture of one of the red breast sunfish. This one, I circled the red underbelly, which you can kind of barely see at the moment. Barely. <laughs> but this is, that's the distinguishing characteristic of a red breast sunfish. It is likely there is a nest that adults were trying to protect, as these photos were taken from June 3rd to July 1st. However, my research on sunfish has said that the period when males guard the nest is in spring, and they only guard for about one week. However, they said that the when they guard and how long they guard is completely based on the temperature of the water, which they prefer to be from 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. According to LakeMurraySC.com, water temperatures in May to July vary from 58 to 80 degrees, 81 degrees in May and 69 to 90 degrees in July. So while this is not the exact temperature that they prefer, most of the temperatures they like are within both of these ranges. My observations, at least compared to my research, conclude otherwise, as spring is usually considered to end in May, and my fish friends were guarding for well over a week. In fact, they were there for close to two months. I'm unsure if this is an anomaly or just an uncommon occurrence. So here I have a picture of one of the larger fish that I found. This one was an adult red breast sunfish, about one foot long, which would make it about four inches bigger than the average. My research says that sunfish tend to make nests in shallow water near the shore, usually nearby some underwater vegetation. My research also found that they like making nests near gravel and small pebbles in which they deposit their eggs. Here I have a picture of two baby sunfish. I circled them because they're very hard to see against the gravel and pebbly background, but I chose this photo so you can see some small sunfish as well as the kind of environment they were in. The nest is also said to be made underneath overhanging vegetation or floating plants. My research also states they tend to make nests close to other families, however, not close enough for their nests to overlap. In fact, there can be up to 80 nests per group of sunfish. The sunfish colony I mainly observed did make its nest near the shore, about 5 feet underwater. However, there was little to no underwater vegetation and no overhanging plants above. But there were numerous rock formations nearby that may have served as cover for the baby sunfish. The apparent nest was near gravel and some small pebbles, as well as some shells on the lake floor. However, there were no signs of a semi-large excavated site where the sunfish may have planted its eggs. Here I have another picture. This one is a bluegill sunfish again, and it's going to eat a tiny little speck of fish food. So when I go down every so often, I bring some fish food and feed the fish that I found. I went under for further exploration about a week later and found a lone adult bluegill sunfish about four feet away. It was located about five and a half feet down and a little farther from shore with a small bit of overhead cover to prevent sunlight from a nearby Doc Graham shadow. It is possible the bluegill may have been guarding a nest of its own. There may have been signs of a nest. However, because of environmental situations, such as low light and murky water, it was impossible to see much of anything besides the fish. If these assumptions are true, it would go with my research stating that nests are commonly made near to each other. So now I'm going to compare my observations to my research. I did find these guys in a gravel or pebble environment. The location was near shore. I did find them in shallow waters. They did exhibit aggressive behavior, and there could have been other nearby possible sites. However, there was no visible excavated egg site. None of this was observed in spring, and the week-long garden was present for about eight times the amount he should. 
So here are my explanations for the differences. It's highly possible the fish I examined had adapted to the lake, as fish, fish are dumped into the lake, which is actually man-made, every so often. It is also true that my sample size was tiny, as Lake Murray has over 650 miles of shoreline, making what I examined a tiny portion of the total lake. So to end my presentation, here I have a video that I took while I was underwater. Um, this video I took about two weeks after I actually started going, so it was way easier to film as they were used to my presence and they wouldn't dart away as often. So this video is of an adult red breast sunfish. You'll see them again in a second. As you can see, the water is very murky and it's very difficult to really see anything. The camera could see way better than I did and was actually able to pick up some tiny baby sunfish in the background as well. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.